What is going on guys and welcome to the channel. You guys all read this video title. Today I'll be breaking down my internship at AMD, how I got started, the interview process, salary, what I worked on, all that good stuff. Those of you guys who aren't following the channel, I spent the last six months interning on AMD Server Performance Group, where my job was pretty much to isolate, analyze, and report on various performance bottlenecks and other issues that came up on AMD servers and compilers. I've been reading all you guys' comments on my last two day in the life at AMD videos, and I know this has been a very highly requested video, and there's obviously a ton to cover. So I'll timestamp the description below to get to all the parts you guys wanna see. But just know as a quick note, AMD does have some pretty strict policies about what I can and can't say. And they have to sign a non-disclosure form before I left. And additionally, they are pretty strict about what I can and can't post on social media. So just know that later in the video, if I'm being like overly vague about what I worked on, that's why. But anyway, with all that covered, let's just hop straight into this thing. So back my sophomore year in college, I was rigorously applying to internships in the fall and winter and just having no luck whatsoever. There just wasn't anything really that special about me. I had a fairly high GPA, couple side projects, use of programming languages, but really nothing to make me stand out from anyone else in my class. And because of that, I didn't really have much to offer any company that I was applying to. And this isn't normally a huge deal because freshmen and sophomores don't really have a ton of experience to begin with, but I was a little bit concerned because I plan on graduating a year early. So that summer, last summer, was really my only chance to get experience before I graduated and got a job after college. So I talked to one of my older and smarter friends and they all pretty much said the same thing. Just do as much networking as possible because as someone with zero experience, that's really the best way to get your foot through the door by knowing somebody already works at these companies. So I reached out to my friends, my family, my family, friends, my distant relatives, even people in my religious community, just anybody and anybody I could talk to. And this was pretty frustrating for me because a lot of these same people who would tell me in the past, like, like, oh, if you need an internship, bro, just hit me up, I'll plug you, or I know somebody, or I got you. But when push came to shove, I'm actually like, hey, I'm trying to get my get an internship, and you help me out? They just politely brushed me off. And as I say, a lot of people did help me out. A lot of family did put in referrals for me or help guide me through this process. That was really awesome, I really appreciated all their help. But even then, uh, with no experience, I still got a lot of rejection straight out the door. But all that networking did finally pay off because I reached out to a lady that I TA'd for my junior year in high school for like community service at my religious center, but that we all put on like our college applications. And she put me in touch with her husband who worked at AMD. So I reached out to him and basically just said, uh, hey, I'm looking for some experience, I don't have a ton of skills, I really just want an opportunity to learn. And I assumed at the time he was a high level engineer or a manager in the company, but it turned out he was very, very high up in AMD's food chain. And I also later, later learned that he passed out my resume to a few of his teams to see if anyone wanted to work with me. And one of those teams, Server Performance, reached out to me for a phone interview. And that might have been the worst interview of my life. So actually it wasn't that terrible of an interview. I've definitely had much worse ones, but that one didn't go too great for me. I remember uh, I was super nervous because my last interview a few weeks before ended in a re fat rejection. It was also because they reached out to me. I didn't have anything to prepare for. There was no like online job posting, so I should know to brush up on these certain skills. And not being able to prepare ahead of time going into that interview like really made me feel uneasy. Anyway, the day of the phone interview came along. The person I was talking to would later become my mentor. And the first half of the interview went okay. It was mainly just questions about my resume and previous work experience. And here I kind of just talked about the project I did at Hackathon and the app that I published at the Google Play Store. Since that was kind of showing I was an independent worker and I could finish things from start to finish. Uh, and I guess like a little bit of leadership since I led two Hackathon teams but it wasn't going too too bad at that point. And then she asked me like some basic programming questions, like how would I implement this? Or how would I look through uh, an array and find the most common word? Uh, just basic questions like those. And at this point in the interview, I was talking too fast. I was uh, slurring my words a bit. I was really thinking about how to craft the best possible answer. I was just spitting out whatever first came into my head. 
but I was still able to answer all of her questions. But the last one third of the interview went pretty terribly because she just started asking me the easiest questions in the world. Like how do I pull a repository using Git? And simple, straightforward questions like those, no dynamic programming, no minimum weight spanning trees, just simple systems and architecture questions like pipelining and caches. But I just didn't know the answer to those questions because I just hadn't gotten that far in uh, like course wise. So I was pretty honest with the end of the interview. I said like, as you can see, I don't have a ton of experience with systems, architecture or assembly, but I'm taking those three classes uh, over the course of the year and I'll be more than happy to go more in depth on those subjects in my own free time. So I left the interview not feeling too great, but I just kept brushing up on my skills, networking and kept applying to other places. And about two weeks from that phone interview, I got an email back from uh, my mentor saying that the team wanted to take me on. And in my head, I'm like, yo, this has to be a mistake. Like one interview over the phone, you're gonna take me on as an intern. And it wasn't even a good interview. Like I, I wouldn't even hire because I was on the other end of that phone. But I was really overjoyed that finally all that applying, that networking, all that stuff finally paid off. And obviously though I'm aware that the main reason I got the internship was because of my referral. Like he literally just created a position for me at the company. And that definitely taught me how important referrals are, especially when getting your foot in through the door. So then a good while after they, uh, I got an email saying they wanted to take me on, I got the official offer letter from HR, which basically said I would be paid $28 per hour. I'll get a $2,500 relocation stipend. I'd be working over the summer in Austin, Texas. And this was a little bit of a surprise to me because I never actually asked where I would be working. I just assumed at the time it would be in Santa Clara because that's where uh, my referral worked out, that's where my mentor worked at, but I was more than happy to go to Texas. So I accepted that and I later got an email back saying, oh, it's been a mistake. Your actual letter is 20, uh, contains uh, $26 per hour with a $1,500 relocation stipend. I'd be working in Santa Clara. And the relocation stipend is based on how far away your college is from where you'll be working. So obviously Santa Clara is a lot closer to UC Santa Cruz than Austin, Texas. And then I later learned that the reason for the mix up in the offers was because my boss knew from like previous experience, he was just way too busy to help me figure stuff out uh, as an intern. So he wanted me to work side by side with my mentor in Santa Clara and she could probably help me out more and have a little more free time for that. And also later when I got my internship extended from the three and a half months, I got a $1 raise 27 per hour, which I think is just law in California. And I also got 500 bucks for office later purchases at home. So I bought like some of this tough stuff you guys have seen in my day in the life videos. So anyway, after that phone interview, when I got an email from my mentors and the team wanted to work with me, they posted the official job listing on AMD's website. And that told me what to prepare for. It pretty much said be good at programming and be very good at assembly and computer architecture. So the computer systems and computer architecture classes that I took over the course of that year, I really worked hard at. And in my free time, I would do assembly practice problems and just learn more about the whole pipelining process in architecture. What's funny though, is that I later learned that HR wrote that, not my team. So I ended up never writing a single line in assembly language which kind of bummed me out because I actually, I really enjoy writing an assembly. So first off, that's the whole bug going around. Uh, the entire internship got moved online. Definitely had its pros and cons, but I don't think it took anything away from the learning experience. Anyway, I started out the internship by looking at large scale memory benchmarks and running them on our own servers and noting the machine specs and everything, uh, running it with GCC and AOCC as well as running all those same specs uh, as close as possible with those same compilers on Intel's Cascade Lake servers. And I definitely got some very surprising results with that. And I ended up noting all those, collecting as much data as possible, and then I presented it to the compiler team. And in that meeting, they basically said that, look, this benchmark is just huge. We want you to focus on this one specific test, or these few tests basically, that are calling the glibc uh, memory function. And those of you guys who don't know, glibc is pretty much the standard library for C and C++. It contains all the functions you guys use like printf, malloc, sterlen, memset, all that stuff. So I was pretty much comparing that test with GCC and AOCC on our server, trying to figure out why are we getting these results. 
And so I was end up looking at code paths, PMC staff, using our internal tools to look at the whole process of performance, try to figure out what is causing that discrepancy. And my mentor was guiding me here. She was just really awesome, my boss too. Uh, my mentor would check in on me usually once a day or every other day. And my boss would check in once a week or every other week. And this was really much needed because there was a huge learning curve for me uh, during those first three months. I would be like forced to get sidetracked with other problems, other issues that came up. And she would just help put me back on that main track of figuring out why we're getting those weird results on our server. But eventually we figured out the issue that was causing those weird results. And then uh, I got my hands on the upcoming uh, AMD server in Milan. I was running the same tasks with those same benchmarks on that server, trying to see if there would be any difference in results. And this whole time I was like noting all my results on uh, an internal pages we have, and it was just, steadily just growing and growing and growing with all this new data. And then my mentor and I met up with the compiler team again because he presented all this data to them and just told them, look, here's the very thing which is causing the issue. Uh, this is like your problem now, please fix it. And in that process, about half a dozen other smaller issues came up uh, and we got to the bottom of those as well. So we told them about that. And that was basically what I did during the official three month internship period that I got. And I spent probably 70% of it just learning new things, learning how to use their internal tools, how to get this or fix this issue that came up with us on a specific hurdle. And again, because the whole bug and I, because I wasn't going back to school for fall quarter, I just asked my boss if we could extend the internship for another three months. And also I was working on a news finding, which looked pretty promising. And eventually got back to me saying that, yeah, they have funding for other interns. So they took me off for the three months and those next three to four, three, three to four months uh, were very promising because we got a lot of data and a lot of issues got fixed. Basically, I spent the next three to four months breaking that task down, looking at it from a dozen different dimensions and then comparing that uh, test results across kernels, platforms, servers, compilers, uh, noting all those results and then figuring out all how to fix all these issues that like new issues that just arise. And a lot of those are actually right now, well, as far as I know, are ongoing issues on different architecture, engineering and compiler teams. So it was really awesome knowing that the stuff I worked on like wasn't just scrap at the end of the internship. It's actually like gonna be contributed to the company and help making our products better. Two of my major findings, my boss actually presented to the higher ups in the company in kind of like the exclusive meetings. And I had a few more meetings with different uh, teams across the company uh, to kind of resolve these issues or see if they can help tell us where they might be coming from. And then my very last week at AMD, I had a final presentation with uh, around 50 people from the company that decided to join in. And I basically created the start to finish presentation about everything that I worked on. And that was really awesome seeing like, wow, like I started off just not even knowing what this thing was. And now it led me to this whole, this whole like uh, present 20 slide presentation of things that I worked on and issues that got fixed or issues that we know exist because of like my work. And that was like a really awesome experience. Unfortunately, the only thing I wasn't able to do a lot of was interacting with other interns, uh, obviously because we were online and because I was the only intern on my team. There were a few events they tried planning out, um, but because I was so busy with school outside of work, I didn't have much chance to go to those like gaming events and those meetups. But again, like I'm really thankful the first place internship did happen because a lot of my friends did get theirs canceled because of uh, the bug. And that's pretty much like a vague overcast of what I did at AMD. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, drop me a big thumbs up or any comments below if you guys want any more questions answered that I can answer. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week for the next video.